let your girl Adela. So for some weeks, I've been wanting to talk about another issue that we've left unaddressed for so long, which is now haunting us. And I want to thank viewers like Yadok Godwill as well as Jerome Oba. They've been writing me that I need to talk about this. And I'm talking about the problem of deforestation in Nigeria. So according to a data taken over a five-year period by environmentalists, Nigeria has the largest desertification rate in the whole world. That is when fertile land, green land, you know, like forests become deserts. And this is due to deforestation, drought, and inappropriate agriculture. Already, we've lost more than 55.7% of our forest in Nigeria. More than 55% of our forest is gone. Every year, we cut down between 350,000 acres and 400,000 acres in Nigeria. Just imagine that. You cut down 400,000 acres without planting them back. We use so many of these trees to build houses. Nigeria is a developing country, so it's expected. But this can be done without endangering the forest. There has to be a plan of planting back more than what we're cutting down. Also, because of fuel scarcity, we use so many of these trees to cook food or to make charcoal, which we will use to cook food. Another thing we do with the trees is to export them in illegal tree trades. There are so many Chinese businessmen now taking advantage of our lack of environmental regulatory policies, as well as the loopholes that exist in our laws and as well as corruption among government officials. They pay these government officials and they allow them to go into the forest to cut down trees illegally, exporting our forestry resources. Since 2013, Chinese businessmen have had their eyes on a tree called rosewood. It's locally known as koso or koso, however you want to pronounce it. We have so many of these trees in Kogi, in Ekiti, in Ondo, in Ogun State, in Taraba, in Kaduna, in Adamawa, in Cross River State. And all these states have been ransacked. All these states have been exploited by these Chinese men. As a result of this, Nigeria and Indonesia now top the world's deforestation list. Guess who is the lowest on the list, as in the people that are preserving their own forest? China! They are not cutting down their own trees, but they are coming to our own country to rape our lands and bring our trees to their own country. You may be wondering why you should be concerned about this. Well, let me tell you. Deforestation has robbed Nigeria of so many things. First of all, the species that are native to Nigeria. All kinds of animals that live in the forest that were found solely in Nigeria are now going extinct because we've taken away their homes. Meanwhile, countries like South Africa, countries like Kenya, they are using their forests and their animals to make huge money in tourism. Even Zimbabwe. <laughs> And God knows we need to diversify the economy right now because we can no longer rely on oil. Just think about how much we could make from tourism if we also have safaris in Nigeria. Not only that, we're experiencing a lot of erosion now because we cut down trees. Trees anchor the soil with their roots, but deforestation causes widespread erosion throughout the tropics. So every year now, we lose lives because of erosion, we lose homes, we lose properties worth millions of dollars in Nigeria and so many parts of Africa because of deforestation. Another reason that you should be concerned is because deforestation Deforestation has greatly increased our temperature in Nigeria. A study shows that the rate at which temperature increases in Nigeria is higher than how it increases globally. Okay, that disturbs me. Maybe you don't understand. Everywhere else, temperature is also increasing because of global warming. But in Nigeria, the rate at which temperature is increasing is higher. So Nigeria is now hotter than it was 10 years ago, even 5 years ago. Trees are supposed to absorb the carbon dioxide that we breathe out and they produce oxygen that we breathe in. But because we are cutting them down, they are not there to absorb the carbon dioxide that we are producing and they are not there to emit oxygen which we breathe. So the carbon dioxide goes up in the atmosphere and accumulates and heats up the earth. So the depletion in the ozone layer gets wider, exposing us to dangerous radiations which the ozone layer is supposed to block from getting to us. So because of deforestation, we now have more carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. In fact, it's more than the ones that are produced by emission from cars, from trucks, from factories, from, from generators. We have more deforestation in northern Nigeria. So many trees have been cut down in northern Nigeria. You guys know trees give us fresh air. It gives us shade so that we can cool our body temperature and they're beautiful. I don't know why we have to cut them down. In fact, I don't know why some people when they see an old tree, they will say a spirit is living in that tree. The spirit that is after your life is living in that tree. Go and cut it down. That is how we cut down so many trees. Hapa! 
Not having trees is also messing up our rain patterns, by the way. Trees help us to perpetuate the water cycle by returning water vapor back into the atmosphere. But without trees to fill these roles, we don't get rain when we should. So we are always praying that God will send rain. Why don't we plant some trees? See, I brought this up today because other people are doing something about deforestation in their countries. Except Nigeria. First of all, we need to stop cutting down trees. Enough. We need to stop all these foreign companies that are exploiting Nigeria. They need to be stopped. And I hope that the Nigerian government will take this up. Whatever bribe you guys are collecting from Chinese businessmen, it needs to stop. Just think about the future of your children. Second of all, we need to start planting. And this has to do with the government as well as individuals. Those of you watching me, if you have a house in Nigeria, just try to plant trees around you. Even you, you will love the fresh air that you'll be getting in the evening when it's very hot. You can just sit under the tree and drink your palm wine or whatever it is that you drink. You will enjoy the fresh air. At the same time, the government needs to do a large scale planting of trees. Thailand, for example, is now taking a drastic measure called seed bombing. They are planting trees with planes. They are using several old planes and these planes are planting up to 900,000 trees per day. The bombs are made with clay, compost and seed. The seeds are enclosed in biodegradable tree cones and they are designed to bury themselves as if they are planted in the ground. So far, they've had more than 70% success and the projection is that by next year, the government of Thailand is hoping to recover all its forest all its forest so can we please copy what Thailand is doing please before it's too late in fact it's already getting too late can we please do something on time and if we cannot do like Thailand if we don't want to use the old place that we have in Nigeria let's do what South Korea did they had huge deforestation problem in South Korea as well Korea's thick forests were cut down and exploited during the colonization period of the Japanese oppression and they were degraded as people cut down trees recklessly to use them for cooking and heating energy during Korea's turbulent time of poverty. They were having erosion problems, they were having harsh weather, everything that we're having right now in Nigeria. Fields caused flooding during the rainy season and caused drought when there was less rain and soil was washed down by heavy rain. These forests became dry land the trees couldn't live on, even grass couldn't grow. Guess what they did? They used manpower to replant 350 million trees. 350 million trees. And you know that gave a lot of people jobs. And I'm sure that a lot of people in Nigeria won't mind planting trees if that is what they need to do to make money. And today, South Korea has recovered. In fact, now they have beautiful forest mountains. They don't have harsh erosions anymore. And this thing is helping them hugely in their tourism industry. The thick and beautiful forests provide clean water and air, while playing a crucial role as a carbon sink, absorbing greenhouse gases that cause climate change worldwide. See how beautiful, we need that in Nigeria. And the truth is, if we don't do something about deforestation on time, we will continue to experience erosion because we don't have trees that are supposed to prevent erosion and it's making it worse. It's not that we won't have erosion, but it wouldn't be as worse as it is right now if we have trees all across the country. Last year, 53 people were killed, 100,000 plus were displaced across Nigeria. This year, we've had our flood problem as well. If we don't do something about deforestation, we will continue to experience this and we will continue to have unstable rainfalls. And not only that, there will continue to be release of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. We will continue to have harsh weather in Nigeria and we will continue to lose a lot of species that are native to the Nigerian forest. Also, we can make huge money in our tourism sector, but if we don't do something about deforestation, we would never know how much we can make. So let's start today and let's start with you and me. Please plant some trees around your neighborhood, around where you live. Plant some trees around your mosque plant some trees around your church not only will it beautify your buildings but people will thank you because they'll be able to, to get some shade by standing under the trees so let's start today it's better late than never you guys not don't know much guess what i'm just keeping it real so moving on to Cameroon, President Paul Bia has announced that he's buying laptops for 500,000 students, whether in private school or public school. Woo, woo, how cool is that? How many of you have presidents that will buy you laptops? Eh? What a wonderful man. I'm telling you, Paul Bia is the man. But you know, this announcement has somehow divided Cameroonians. There are some of them that are very happy, very excited. I mean, how many presidents buy laptops for their citizens? You know, 500,000 laptops. Very generous, right? And then there are some Cameroonians that are very upset 
let me tell you why they said first of all paul bia is taking a loan from china to buy these laptops they said the loan will be paid in 10 years some said in 20 years that this is to make sure that he's not alive to worry about how to pay second of all he's not only taking the loans from china he's buying the laptops from china so these cameroonians are like well why not buy from africans is there no african country where they make laptops others are saying that why doesn't he invest this money in cameroon use it to empower cameroonians sponsor them to china for them to go and learn how to make laptops and then bring them back and build a laptop manufacturing plant in cameroon so that way it will provide job opportunities for cameroonians and the laptops will sell for cheaper if they are made in cameroon you know made in cameroon bought in cameroon so you understand and then there are some cameroonians that are saying even if that would take long he can also convince china to use that money to come and set up a laptop plant in cameroon so that way it's owned by china but they would employ cameroonians in cameroon so you understand it's all about giving people a job you know in cameroon and then the laptops will be cheaper if those things are made in cameroon but you know wait wait a minute by the way how much is the money we are talking about huh? 75 billion francs who oh, snap that's about 127 million dollars not be so so that means each laptop would be about 254 dollars so you think they should have given them more discounts i mean of course there are laptops that you can buy for thousands of dollars and there are laptops you can buy for 100 dollars so you understand it all depends on the kind of laptop that you want but if someone is buying that many that is 500 000, do you think they should have given them more discounts the truth is having these laptops would empower young people that's the truth yes it will they need this the students they need this laptop that is if they have access to the internet you know some people have laptops with no internet it's like you don't have laptops <laughs> because you know if you don't have internet and you have a laptop it's, you don't have anything so that is if they have access to the internet yes this will really really empower the youth as we all know the internet is the big thing now and that's where people are making money so they do need it but at the same time honestly however you decide to look at this China is the one gaining. China is the one profiting in this deal. I mean, the loan is coming from China. So when you eventually pay them back, you're going to have to pay interest. And if you cannot pay it back, you owe China. And trust me, you don't want to owe China. And then since you're getting the laptop from China, the money is being invested back in China. So the money never really leaves China. And then their people would have the guarantee of job at least until they can make 500,000 more laptops. Finally, if the population of Cameroon is 22.2 million they have to have more than 500,000 students in fact they must have more than 1 million students if the population is 22.2 million so how would you determine who gets a laptop and who doesn't will it be people that know people that know people that know people that know Paul Bia or just anybody eh? I don't know another thing is that many Cameroonians are speculating that Paul Bia is doing this all because elections are coming up in 2018 me I don't know I mean the man has been there for like 34 years no so oh snap 34 years the devil is a liar Chai! maybe he doesn't want to leave you think he wants to leave i don't think so if you have been somewhere for that four years you're very comfortable anyway so maybe he's doing this so that when election comes at least he can guarantee 500 000 votes i don't know all i know is if this man really wants to empower his own people just teach people how to fish instead of giving them fish you know last week the u.s donated five laptops to the efcc in nigeria that is the economic and financial crimes commission and they were so excited <laughs> excited they put it on facebook efcc why you they do me like that now why you come they shame me like that thank you america you know thank you yare you know too or you are doing some of you may not get it later you will <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, I didn't know that. <laughs> you know in fact a lot of nigerians are worried about what could be in the computer no be made come but you know back to cameroon it's a shame that politicians can manipulate people by giving them fish instead of teaching them how to fish before i forget by the way the government of rwanda also wants their people to have laptops they wanted 150,000 laptops but instead of taking loans from china or wherever they decided to invite a company that makes laptop to come and establish in rwanda employ the people of rwanda they started last month already they've employed 120 people and because they just started you know they will employ more people as they grow and they're already making laptops in rwanda and guess what they're writing on the laptops made in rwanda first of all rwanda is not taking any loans to do this second of all rwanda is getting its name on the products even if everything is not made in rwanda even if they are just assembling it in rwanda it says made 
made in Rwanda. Number three is they are providing jobs for the people of Rwanda. They already said that they want to expand, which means more people will be hired. So however you look at it, Rwanda is not losing anything. They don't have any loans to pay back to any country. Cameroon can definitely learn something from Rwanda in this issue. But you guys now don't know much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. Growing up in Kenya, my sister and I were very close. But like any sisters, we fought a lot. She always got new clothes and I always got hand-me-downs. Now she's putting her children through school in Kenya. We still fight sometimes, especially when I send money for the kids. I tell her, buy some clothes for the younger one, and we both laugh. With nearly 500,000 locations, our app and online, this is moving money for better. All right, guys, it's been real, and I'm keeping it real right up in here. Don't forget to follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Until next week, I'm going to see you all later. Peace out. Welcome to Fosby Luxury Hotel. At Fosby Luxury Hotel, we offer excellent service. Our rooms have all the necessary facilities to make your stay comfortable and memorable. You will also have access to internet service, breakfast, 24 hour power supply, poor condition, free international calls, free time pumping service, and free car battery charge. So, what are you waiting for? Quickly visit Fosby Luxury Hotel. We are located as number one at the Liraba Michele off Rajirazaki Road, First Estate, Amuwo, or the First Tag For more information or reservation, please call us. 080-75-78-7135 or 080-99-90-0601. You can also take advantage of our online ongoing promo at www.fossvhotel.com to make your reservation and payment for your favorite room, which attracts a discount rate. Please note, rooms are reserved based on first come, first serve. Fossvhotel experience the home of comfort. They come, they come.